Oh, this should be an easy one. Where we are Yeah, I think these are two franchises, Kevin, right, that are obviously go. pride themselves on what they do on the defensive end. It all starts there. Their philosophy is championships begin there. And if you talk about... Oh, we should be able to go out. And Mario Hizonia subbed in for Green. And then for Minnesota, Chang, he's checked in for Green. You're welcome. Perez comes in for Angel Wiggins. And Ricky Rubio subbed in for Nelson. I miss a free throw. Rebound by Ibaka. It's on the front of the end of his quarter with a two for one. And that's how 
No, guys. Fuck, Young. Yeah, we're up three. Says it would be embarrassing. Oh my, you made me say out. Ariel Hizonga comes in for Aaron Gordon, and it's over Payton in for Jody Meeks. So on the floor for Minnesota, Fred, he's in a small boat. Dunn is out there with Ricky Rubio, and there's Hill, and Jang in at the four spot. That was their defense. I'm going to have to take over the game. Why would you force it? Now let's go to the sideline to catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Olden. Well, we know Mario Hazonia is the sharpshooter out of Croatia, and some say he was the cockiest player from that 2015 draft class. He once said, I've never had respect to anybody on a basketball court. I don't care. Whether it's a veteran or a young player standing in front of me, I always have to Yeah, I'll finish it. What's up? What a the boo and me. Here's Tang, and it's Hill. That's how it is. This is by Tang. 
and it's an 11 point Timberwolves lead. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. There's a four second difference from the shot clock to the game clock. Screen, the screen. This one for three. And that's collected by Hill. They have been more dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And Rubio kicks to Dunn. One second left. And oh, he's the punch for Peter. Nice shot. Yes, so. Well, they can head to the bench riding high. There will be a few extra smiles in their huddle after that buzzer beater. So we've reached the end of the first half of play. Minnesota on top. And they finish it. Thanks very much, Ricky. Bench is I took over the game. They produced like they did in the first half. How does that help you? It's amazing. <laughs> Hey, we're in great shape, fellas. Now, no matter how much we go up, we need to keep that same winning mentality. Just do what you've been doing, and it's smooth sailing. Let's go. Come on. Man. Yeah, I still went back. That's who's out there for Orlando. Another bucket added to the lead. They've been the better team in every facet. Yeah, you know, because of that, they've completely taken the air out of this building. They have done everything necessary to silence this crowd. Minnesota leading by 22. And you love the defense that Ibaka brings to the court. Damn, that was a good he shot. Bobby Rice. And it's good. Two guys back into the shot and go to the free throw line. But he's just looked a bit overmatched, especially inside. Some changes from Minnesota. Oh, I miss. He comes in for Jordan Hill. And Ricky Rubio is up in for Lebanon. And what makes it very special is his passion for the game. He just, he yeah, he works tirelessly to make it a street. Timberwolves shooting a show of 60% since the halftime break. And with the pocket and his defensive presence, it's not only the blocks he gets, but the threat of blocks that makes him work. It's a great point. You see a lot of very talented players start to hear footsteps when they get close to Ibaka. It, it isn't just that shot blocking that you mentioned. It's his health defense and ability also to defend on the perimeter. Also incredibly strong and very difficult to back down. At the elbow, it's Wigan. And count it. Two points for the game. One more for the free throw line. We took our time. Interior has been inferior defensively. It has got to tighten up. The Timberwolves making a switching. Garnett's checked in. The Timberwolves is two free throws in the game going five for seven. Yeah, and 79% from the line as a team a season ago. Pretty reliable in that regard. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Rubio. That's to Vazania. Up top of the bucket. All sorts of time. That one good for two. And not in our mind as a natural catch and shoot guy, Ibaka certainly has developed this part of his game. Frez with the ball. 13 points in the game. Wiggins a screen on Peyton. Garnett with it. Biombo on him. They grabbed the wrong miss. So the whistle blows on the shot. Oh, I thought that was May. Contact right there. Way to attack. They didn't need the contact. 
The Timberwolves shot 75 percent of the strike, six of eight. And what a return has been for Kevin Garnett here to Minnesota, the franchise that drafted him, who played the most games with, won the MVP with, and Doris has been a great homecoming to see him transition in the next generation. Hey, Kev, you can't say enough about the impact KG has on a locker room full of young players. He has His approach to the game is few and far between in the NBA. Not only one of the greatest power forwards to ever play, obviously, but one of the greatest leaders in NBA history. All in here now for an injury report. I told me it looks like to that it's a strained quad muscle, and you can see from the way that he's limping around that his leg is not well. That is such a tough blow to take at the early stage of this season. Hopefully, with it being early, we can recover and help this team down the road. Kevin? Thank you, David. Really appreciate you finding out how he's doing. And, you know, I know everyone is rooting for him to make a quick and full recovery. I can tell you this. He has the pain tolerance to come back earlier than expected and the kind of toughness, too. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. Fred with the bucket. And this is what happens when you don't crowd Fred, giving just a little daylight from the perimeter, and he makes it look easy. Faden outside, passes it to Meeks, knocked away, and stolen by Wigan. And now Minnesota on the fast break, shots good from Young. And not quite as aggressive from outside as they were in the first half. I'm going to have a bright beat with the lead. Faden outside. And there's the beat to Meeks. They set the pick. I get six. That went off the back iron and out. That's an example of great defense. His teammates love that about him. Always wanted to shoot a struggle against this guy. And, and chalk up a few more points for him there. This has been a one-sided game in just about every area. In just about everything. Lockdown defense, explosive offense. This has been special. The three quarters of play all in the books. And this one all but over already. Minnesota on top. As they end the third quarter with an energy boost, a 19 to 5 run. And when we return, look at the fourth quarter rolling right here on 2K Sports. Now let's listen in to Frank Vogel's huddle. Break the floor. When you're on the ball or close it out, close out faster. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the fourth quarter. On the court for Minnesota, Reds in at the three. Levens is out there with the lead. And there's Hill. And it's over. We won. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. Of course, you've talked to so many and heard a lot of insight and which coaches in the NBA have the most impact on the game. You coached, you played, gather it in for us. Give us a, a compass on this topic. Yeah, this is an interesting one because you can go in a lot of different directions. You look at a guy like Doc Rivers, who because he played, there is this, seems to be this natural affinity of the players. You talk about a player's coach, understands relationships, uh, won a championship in Boston, uh, convinced a group of offensive-minded guys like Paul Pierce and Ray Allen that they needed to play defense to the level of Kevin Garnett. Uh, you also look at a guy like Eric Spolstra, who, though he is young, paid his price to come up through the ranks. He talks about spending years in that dark, dank Miami video uh, operations room. But when guys like uh, Jeff Van Gundy, Stan Van Gundy, uh, Doug Collins, are complimenting you as a young guy in Eric Spolstra, I'm thinking he's got a pretty good future. Are you surprised when good coaches don't win in the league? Yes, but I think so much goes into winning. You have to remain healthy, and over the course of an 82-game schedule, that's hard. You've got to have great organizational strength, Kevin. We know that now Damn. ownership and general managers uh, have to be as strong as the head coach. And listen, there's luck. You know, sometimes injuries play a part in who you match up against and who you don't. There's so much to winning. Wonderful insight. The pass to Zimmerman. Shot clock at six. Bader on the way. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. 
Perez has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Kick out to Levine. From outside, off the mark. He had a make from downtown in the first half, but no three since then. Vicious to Wilcox. And good. Damn. By TJ Augustine. Well, the league is always looking, Doris, into every possible angle to make precise calls, to give it more precision, more efficiency, more validity. What do you think about some automated assistance for officials? You know, I'm not sure about this. I like flying. When we go to the replay center, uh, if it's sort of a small call out of bounds at the end of the game, whatever the case may be, I would like to see those officials back in the replay center make that call, communicate it, and let's move on. I think the pace of play would be helped. They've almost perfected, though, the time it takes to put it up in front of the officials at the game and the view from the from the center and cigar. They've done a really good job. And again, a case in point where the NBA is proactive trying to improve the game. Yeah, it's the best of all professional leagues up there. No question. From deep, rebound Minnesota. We're in the final quarter of play here, three minutes in. Here's Aldrich. Soft touch off the ground. Plus, simply running in offense, probably the area where Zach can grow the most. Now, here is Augustine. He dishes it to Watson. But free. Rebound collected by Levine. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. Perez dishes to Hill. That one goes in. And everything should just flat out fall apart. Let's go. Especially on the interior. We played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. Out to the wing. Here's Wilcox, drills the three-pointer. Now Levens. And here is Perez. The putback, great positioning on the putback. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. Zimmerman, best to Watson. Stolen by Levine. And here we go, fast break, Levine's got it. And he comes up with the deuce. And that bucket is has been a big difference in two points in the paint between the two teams. Well, the one question Zach Levine had when he entered the NBA is whether or not he could be a reliable contributor on offense. Of course, he's put in the work to improve his efficiency a great deal in that regard. Yeah, and I think a big part of that for Levine is that he's worked on his jump shot to where he's now more of a threat. He and so it's the Timberwolves taking care of business here. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says I think Greg an awful lot about this team. I, I guess they don't need home cooking. It's supposed to be a play at all. I mean, Kevin, just a